In my visit to Mandy's urban garden, she showed me many flowers in her flower garden that I had never seen before. Many of them have medicinal value or attracted bees. I've put them in small excerpts or small groups here in my journal so that they're easier to search for particular flowers. What is that? This is lupin. Um, you can kind of see a few flowers down there that are still blooming. Uh, it, and they're seed pods. It grows quite nicely. I'm pretty sure it's one of the ones that after this year it will probably be invasive. <laughs> But uh, it was part of a, uh, I think it may have been part of that same seed packet of local plants. Um, it actually took two years to bloom. So the first year it was just this short little plant that had these funky leaves and didn't know what it was. It overwintered and then uh, this spring it popped up and had a bunch of beautiful purple flowers. I have seen them in other colors in other regions, but it looks like all of mine are purple. There's actually another one over here. So it's a pretty sturdy stem. Yeah. And it's like a bush, not a plant. It's more like a bush, right? Yeah. I don't know whether it will die this year or whether it will continue to bloom. I don't know if it acts as a perennial or not. You'll have to tell me. Mm -hmm. So you said you had another one over here? Yep. So here's another one that's blooming. Oh, nice. This, one, this guy. Is, does it have any medicinal things that you know of? Not that I am aware of. It's just pretty. Interesting leaves. Yes. So these down here are the same thing. Correct. Really a lot bigger leaves down here. Mm -hmm. And as you can see, the uh, flower pod, or flower, <coughs> turns into all of these little pods and then they open up. So as you can see, one plant produced an awful lot of seeds. Which is why you think it may become invasive. Correct. I did spread the seeds in the far back corner because it does not get watered and it's kind of no man's land and so I figured if they thrive there that's actually a win for me because I don't have to care for them so we'll see. I actually got seeds from the seed saving class at the extension office um, that was lupin and I tried to get them to sprout inside in little containers and nothing came up so apparently it thrives when it's uh unloved <laughs> and when it, you try to do it it just won't happen that's my kind of flower so the uh, pink flower actually these ones over here are hollyhock they Ultimately, they should Is get... this one too, a different yep. color? Yep. Ultimately, they should uh, grow quite large. I've seen ones that are five feet tall. Um, it's also a... It, it takes two years to bloom, at least. These ones actually took more like three years, but I think it's because the soil here is not that great. What's that? That is a hollyhock. Oh. So, um, they normally take at least two years to bloom. This is one of my oldest ones. So, this one is, I'm thinking this is year four, actually. And it has bloomed each year. Actually, it started blooming the first year that it was planted. Um, and it's just bloomed ever since each year. It has a nice pink flower, but the bees do like it, and uh, I have read that they do have medicinal uses, although I have not tried it yet. 
speaking of invasive plants, tell me about this yellow one because it's everywhere. So that is evening primrose. Uh, the first plant came up on its own. I'm guessing a bird had dropped a seed and I thought it was pretty at the time. So I left it, let it go to seed um, before ripping it out. And as you can see, letting it go to seed and uh, letting it disperse those seeds, let it become a little bit invasive. So at this point, I'm, I've let these ones bloom, but I will be ripping them out actually quite soon before the seed pods, because all of, all of these things are the seed pods and the seeds, the seeds are tiny like snapdragon seeds. Oh. So those pods will be filled with a ton of seeds. So I will be yanking them up. I have read, and actually the reason I left the first plant was I had read that you could eat the taproot of the evening primrose. However, when I yanked one up and did a small taste test, I did not find the uh, taste to be all that appetizing, so that is no longer a reason to keep it around.